Okay, welcome back to uh, this series on data visualization, and I'm so happy to be giving this because this is now like the third time I've had to do this one due to technical failures. Yay! Okay, so we are in this RStudio Cloud project, so normally I would click on that. Instead, I'm just going to tab over here and pick up from where we left off before. Uh, so many, many years ago, as far as I can tell. Okay, what I left you to do last time was to go back over, uh, recreate the, the plot we just had with GM point, add the GM smooth layer, hopefully that went well, and then find out what GM rug is. So if we go back over here, hopefully what you've typed in is something like this, GM rug, mapping equals AS, X equals dispel, Y equals highway, and what I've done for mine is just include factor, the color equals factor still. So if I go Control Shift S to source this, here's what I get. The GM rug is plotting um, the uh, each of the individual points uh, as horizontal uh, bars over here. So this dot here maps onto that horizontal line, uh, and it's one of the dots that maps onto this vertical line right here. So GM rug gives you the um, shows you the two marginal distributions, and that can be handy sometimes um, in in some contexts. Okay, so hopefully that's all uh, all good. What I want to kind of call attention to now though is that my code has gotten really long. Like I have taken 20 something lines to write this plot and they're kind of redundant. I think I've set x equals y, x and y in three separate places in my code and it would be nice not to have to do that. So let's talk about that. In general, you would like to make your code uh, readable to a human uh, so that they know what all the parts uh, are saying um, and also short. Um, so ideally, you don't really want lots and lots of code. You want something that is you know, uh, easy enough to do. And as a general rule, um, spend time tidying after you have been playing around. So if we go back to the code that I have just written, I've been playing around and I've ended up with some quite messy code where I keep where I've got redundancies in there. This is a lot like what happens when my kids play around with lots of toys and they leave stuff behind and somebody has to go and clean up the mess and that somebody is usually me and I don't like it. Uh, but alas, you know, I have young kids, that's how it goes. You are older, I hope, <laughs> than my seven and ten year old children uh, and I, it would be nice if then we clean up after ourselves. So here's how we're going to go about doing that. Our problem here is that we're specifying the same piece of information in multiple places. And we actually don't have to. Because X and Y values are the same, ggplot allows us to, they're the same for every single layer, ggplot allows us to make them global aesthetics. And we do that just by moving this mapping statement inside the call to ggplot. So it happens up here at the top rather than in one of any one of the specific local geoms. So anytime we uh, specify mapping inside the ggplot command, we say that those aesthetics are global. And all of the geoms will inherit the values of x and y that they get from that global value. However, over here, where I've specified just mapping equals like, the mapping for color, um, only here for this geom point, this is a local mapping and it will apply only to that layer. Okay, so let's go and do that with our own code. So we go back up here and I am just going to do, uh, I'm going to remember that I actually have two keyboards here. Let's delete that. And for the sake of my sanity, let's get rid of some of this superfluous white space now. So our geom point looks like that. Geom smooth, yeah, that, that's only got X's and Y in it, so we'll get rid of all of that. Oops, geom smooth looks like that. And geom rug, let's go, uh, let's delete all of it as well. Yeah. One thing to find yourself that I almost always find myself doing when I clean up like this is checking what's gone, ha what's happened with my parentheses. So GM rug opens and closes, that's fine. Um, GM smooth opens and closes, that's fine. GM point, that 
does look like it's fine, I just have that parenthesis on the wrong line. So this parenthesis here closes out that bracket. The second one here closes out that one. This third one here closes out that one. One of the most common sources of programming mistakes is mismatch parentheses. So if you have one too many parentheses like this, uh, you are going to get an error. So if I go, uh, let's save that, and R is already telling me, hey, I'm going to get an error over here. When you see that, this is R Studio being smart enough to realize that this code is not going to work, but I'm going to be foolish and try and run it anyway. So Control Shift S to source it. Yeah, it's complaining. Um, when you see errors like that, you know, often it'll even point you to the spot where you've made this error. One of the first things you should check for. Uh, besides mismatch parentheses is typos. So if I had gone geom, geom wug, which all of the linguists out there should find really funny, and go like that, it complains could not find function geom wug. So those are really really typical ways of producing errors. Okay, so now that we've had that, I've been cleaning up as I go, I've cleaned up those three things, what I need to do now is up here go mapping equals and fill them back in again so x equals dispel y equals highway yay ah uh, okay and this should work um and it has just occurred to me uh, that I'm not wearing my sunglasses. Um, so now you've got that thing where I'm not making eye contact with you properly. In future videos I'm going to go straight back to using it. I have only just realized that I didn't change back. I don't wear them to look cool, I wear them to make the eye contact thing in the video a little bit less weird. Sorry! Okay, back on point. Now that we have uh, this mapping specified globally up here, this value of x and y will be inherited everywhere. Um, the geom point is going to have its own color, but the other two will not have any color aesthetic. Let's just check that that works. Let's clear the plot and Control Shift S to source it, and yay! It gives us what we expect. Okay, so we have done that, and now I will tab back to the slide. So this will sort of, I hope, make sense. At this point in my class, what I generally do is get people to do uh, paired discussions. So what you're doing now it would be to go through and see if you have learned these concepts. I haven't fully explained them in the videos, but this is another one of those ones where I want you to think about it before I flesh it out. What precisely in this code corresponds to a variable? What corresponds to a geom and what do the geoms do? Slightly trickier, can you work out which of these things are R functions? I've been using the word function a bit here and there, but I haven't been super precise in saying exactly what I mean by that. Um, and if you want, uh, also consider the question of why is this the same code as this? This code here is long and thin, this one is wide. When I deleted white space to tidy it all up and to uh, and I also kind of moved the code around for my mapping. Um, I have cleaned it up, but I'm still sort of saying it's the same code. Exactly why am I saying that? Okay, so I've almost done with this one. The last thing I want to do before uh, ending this one is point you to uh, exercise 5. I usually run this in class directly after exercise 4, so what I'm doing uh, now is saying uh, go back over here to the RStudio project. In Under the Files tab, you'll notice there is a file here called Exercise ggplot05. Uh, Click on that to open it, and you'll find some instructions in there, uh, and an exercise that you can do on your own. It's not a particularly complicated one, but um, this is the first of the written exercises I'm going to send you to, so uh, the assumption would be that you've gone through this before uh, and gone through this exercise before we move on to the next section um, in which I will talk about this dinosaur very briefly, not really, I'm going to talk about naming things next. Okay, and I will now stop there.